Next, we have Karan and Shruti from Samagra, who are going to talk about Code for Government Tech, Initiative Within and Mentorship Programs to enable DPGs, digital public goods, and DPIs, digital public infrastructures, to enable and make them community-driven and community-friendly. Please welcome Karan and Shruti with a huge round of applause. I'm Shruti Agarwal, and I'm an engineer at Samagra and an open source enthusiast. Today, I'll be co-presenting with Karan, who is an engineering manager at Samagra. And we are going to present on C4GT, which is Code for GovTech, an initiative to contribute code for social impact. So before diving deep into what C4GT is and why we have started it, let's get familiar ourselves with some of the terminologies. The first is digital public goods. So this is a buzzword around these days. Let me make it very simple for you. It is comprised of two words, digital and public goods. Digital represents any electronic tool, resource, or a device that can store or present data. Whereas a public good is a commodity or a service for the society of the well-being, it can be given by any organization, private individual, or any government body. So digital public goods can be an open source software, open data, open AI models, or just an open AI standard that is help us to attain the sustainable development goals. So some of the examples of DPGs and DPIs are, and I'm sure many of you have also used these, is Bhamini, UPI, uh, Divoc, ODK, Drupal, uh, Sunbird, DigiLocker, and many more. So now the organizations who build digital public goods are known as DPG builders, whereas the organizations, or maybe anybody, it can be an individual as well, that choose to implement, utilize, or integrate DPGs are known as the DPG adopters. The very common example is Beckin, who is a DPG, and it is used by JustPay to make the Namayatri application which is made on the common network standards defined by the ONDC and which is in turn built on the backend. Now we have understood the terminologies. Now the first question which arises is the why of the C4GT and the need of the C4GT. So to explain the why and what of C4GT, I'll take you to the journey of three personas. First is Janvi. So meet Janvi. She's an undergraduate at an IT Kurukshetra. She has an immense interest in tech and actively looking for opportunities to build skills and gain industry level experience. She wanted to explore open source and she wanted to contribute to the projects which could create high impact. The second persona is Abhishek, who is an SDE at an organization, Tech for Good. He is immensely interested in contributing to the social goods and is brimming with the innovative ideas. And he also wanted to mentor some of the raw talent like Janvi. The last one is the Tech for Good, which is an organization, a DPG builder and DPG adopter organization who wanted to build a community around their products. Now see what they want, what they're looking for. So Janvi is looking for contribution on the social goods. Abhishek is looking for mentoring the uh, raw talent like Janvi. Whereas the organization, Tech for Good, are looking for the active community around their products. So we have identified these gaps, and according to these gaps, we have uh, finalized the idea of this code for GovTech. So the first gap is the raw talent like Janvi. For the meaning, they are looking for the meaningful places to contribute. The second is uh, Abhishek, who wanted to mentor uh, the people like Janvi. The third is the organization who wanted to build a community around their products. The fourth is we have also seen there's a rapid growth of DPGs in the upcoming decades. And the last is there's a no single platform existing for all these personas. So to identify these gaps and hence came into the being code for GovTech. So C4GT is an ecosystem initiative to build an open source community of coders and mentors around digital public goods, digital public infrastructure, or any tech building block which can contribute to the social impact. Now we have discussed about the gaps, right? So what are the initiatives we have taken to fill those gaps? The first is the dedicated mentoring program, which is an annual mentoring and coding program where selected contributors, and the contributor can be any college student or maybe any working professional, 
get the opportunity to work on the population scale projects. They receive one-on-one -on -one mentorship from leading practitioners and there are many other perks as well. Now, what, what are the personas doing in the mentoring program? So the first is the organization, Tech for Good, which supplies contributors with a well-defined and actionable problem statements and unblocks and supports the contributors. The second is Abhishek. He wanted to mentor the young talent, right? So he mentors, reviews, unblocks, and motivates contributors and offers valuable insights and expertise to them. The third is Janvi. She prepares a comprehensively designed document known, named as proposal for the contributions and what she wanted to contribute into the program and works on delivering the solution with the help from their mentors and organization. Now this is our timeline which looks like for the mentoring program. The first is setup, where the different organizations came and put their tickets and the issues and the problem statement which they want contributors to work upon. The second is the application phase where the different contributors came and just tried, explored the open source projects, make their proposal documents, and submit to the organizations. The third is the selection phase, where the organizations shortlist the topmost proposals and select the contributors. The fourth is the contribution phase, which is the largest of the timeline, where contributors actually contribute to the code. And they, and you know, the one line of a code can impact billions of lives because they are contributing to the population projects. And the last is the community. We also had a community ecosystem initiative, which is a DPG dialogues, where different personas, different people have came into a one room. Then for taking, uh, for the partner organizations of the dedicated mentoring program 2023, we have the different organizations, such as FIDE, MITI, NHA, Samagra X, Shiksha Lokam, and many more. For taking you to the quantitative impact, I'll invite Karan to take you towards that. Uh, thanks, Shruti. Uh, <clears throat> uh, just like Shruti mentioned, uh, we ran the uh, dedicated community program for two years. Uh, one is in 2022 and one is in 2023. Let's just look at the, some of the quantitative impacts that we saw. Uh, in 2022, we were able to ensure one-to-one -one mentorship between the contributors and the mentors. Uh, we were able to bring in the GovTech ecosystem leaders uh, with an inauguration program, a midpoint showcase, as well as a finale. Uh, we were able to provide access to peer learning for the contributors. Uh, this was through peer learning sessions or by doubt resolutions. And finally, we also had hands-on coding experiences uh, between the community and the mentors. Some numbers that we look at is we were able to contribute in 2022 to nine projects. Uh, we had 13 contributors. Uh, we had 25 plus new features contributed to open source DPGs. And we had 100% of the code contributed to the uh, original pro products. In 23, uh, we changed uh, a few things around. We also inculcated a system of super mentors, where in addition to mentors, there were also domain expert super mentors. Uh, uh, mentoring the contributors. Uh, we also had a DPG Dialogues initiative where the entire ecosystem came together to discuss ideas. We also started web check-ins. And finally, with super mentors, hands-on coding experience became better. Uh, some of the numbers are from the previous nine projects, we came to 38 projects. Uh, we came to 103 contributors. We came to 100 plus new features. And we got 80% of these pull requests created by these contributors approved till today, and more are getting approved as we uh, talk. These talk about the quantitative impact, but let's now also look at the qualitative impact on the, on, on the personas that we were trying to give an impact on. So for, for Janvi, she was able to contribute to a socially impactful open source project. Uh, she was able to get exposure to real life use cases and she was also getting some working, working ethics from her mentor. Uh, she also learned from the industry experts, be it mentors or super mentors, and she got recognition as well as internship opportunities. Most of the uh, contributors ended up getting PPOs or internship opportunities with their organizations. What about Abhishek? Uh, Abhishek was able to orchestrate the contributions to socially impactful open source projects. This is something he wanted to do. 
he got mentorship opportunities which he became better at and he got deeper connections in the dpg ecosystem that just made his network stronger finally for tech for good they got a community built around their dpg they got use cases contributed from the community they made up their project contribution ready some of these projects were not very open source friendly uh, tech for good through uh, the mentorship program was able to do that and contributions will be the future adopters builders and hires so these contributors are now aware of those dpgs and will now want to adopt them further and that will lead to more adoption for tech for good now future plans uh, we as programmers whenever we think of what to do next we usually retrospect on what we did previously and take learnings from that that is what we exactly did we took learnings from the community we sat down with janvi and people like janvi to understand what were certain things that did not go so well in the mentorship program 2023 certain things that did not go so well for janvi is our uh, friends and peers also wanted to get involved but because we had a limit of the projects uh, not all of our friends and peers could get involved uh, it took time for her to get onboarded onto the system hence two months was too short a period of time to get onboarded as well as to be able to contribute as well and she still wants to keep contributing she did not want to contribute only for the two months uh, for abhishek the problem statements were he had to train the contributors on basics as well it took away some time from his where he couldn't really work on socially impactful projects he was more so working on basics uh, it was difficult to work on all projects between within the two month timeline and also he too wants to keep contributing and mentoring now for tech for good uh, they need mentors from the community also there's only a limited number of people in their organization who would be able to mentor uh, they need use cases and problem statements from the community they have their own uh, product uh, timelines and product road maps but needs coming from the community must be more will be more helpful to them and they're looking forward to further contributions from the community taking these learnings into mind uh, we already had a dedicated mentorship program which will continue to run in 2024 as well but what we've also started doing is building a continuous community building initiative uh, this is like a long term uh, program uh, to nurture a sustainable ecosystem for the larger community of dpgs and dpi this is a long term program where uh, Uh, dpgs are getting involved into the program and running long term programs of months and even years with a dedicated team to drive com community contributions to the system uh there are certain things that we did in addition to the continuous community building uh, program and that is we built a bunch of toolkits one is a dpg contribution readiness framework what this does is it tells a dpg how community contribution ready that dpg is some of the dpgs did not have good readmes so we helped them design that some of them did not have standardized issue templates we helped them design that etc etc uh, that is the second point so coming up with a standardized issue template which any contributor can go to a program understand what is required and then contribute to that dpg and finally a point system which motivates the contributors to contribute more to dpgs and helps them uh, get more recognition among their peers now future plans for the personas for janvi uh, she becomes a mentor for the continuous community building program which we just launched and also for the mentorship program which will be launched in 24 she starts and leads a dpg chapter in her college uh, she continues contributing to dpgs and gaining points she also gets support from the ecosystem for abhishek he becomes a super mentor he gets exposure to more dpgs and he mentors a dpg chapter which basically maybe janvi is running and for tech for good they follow the toolkits that we built they get continuous contributions into their programs they adopt a dpg chapter which maybe janvi herself is running and they have a strong hiring funnel now because now they have a bunch of folks who know their product are ready to contribute and are actively contributing to it with this uh, with a large audience here there might be interest as to okay dpg and c4gt sounds interesting how do i get involved <clears throat> for folks here who are like 
Janvi and want to contribute to social good, please join our Discord community. You can become a contributor. You can learn from the industry, uh, uh, industry veterans and get more uh, industry exposure. For people like Abhishek who are wanting to mentor and want to get involved more, please fill this uh, Google form. We shall be getting in touch with you. And for organizations like tech for good who have open source systems, who are DPGs, uh, working, at, uh, uh, the, uh, working at good social causes, but are looking for contributions from contributors as well as mentors, please fill this form and we'll be more than happy to get in touch with you and see how we can work together further. Yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you so much.